Hey everyone, I'm Almar of AlmarsGuides.com and in this video here I'm going to be talking about the Skin Changer build in Titan Quest. So this build is one that is added in the Ragnarok expansion pack because it uses Rune Mastery as well as Nature Mastery. And uh, if I'm going to rate this build on like uh, a scale of, you know, different builds in the game, I would put this one slightly above average, but not quite in the god mode territory of other builds. I don't have the best gear for this build, uh, for this character, but I still did very, very good, and I still uh, had a lot of fun with this character, and it's still like eight cut through enemies, uh, like a like a hot knife through butter, I think is the, as the saying goes. But uh, I was I was quite impressed with it compared to some of the other builds in the game. Of course, Rune Mastery is quite overpowered, and uh, Rune Mastery also has a lot of damage on its own without needing to synergize a secondary build. And of course, Nature has a lot of support that it gives to uh, a lot of other Masteries and a lot of survivability that it gives to other Masteries. So these kind of synergize very, very well together. Rune Mastery is like all of your damage and all of your uh, firepower, and Nature is like all of your survivability and support. And what's nice is Rune Mastery also comes with a decent amount of survivability and support too, so it's just a nice beefy build that does a lot of damage too. So let's jump in and look at what exactly makes this build beefy and what makes it do a lot of damage. So Heart of the Oak, the first ability in nature that we're going to be talking about, you should get this as well as the passives that come with it. Heart of the Oak is one of the, the best abilities you can get in the nature tree, hands down. It's an amazing buff that increases your elemental resistances as well as the per, uh, total percentage of your health. It's fantastic. Uh, regrowth, I recommend you skip out because it's it's just a healing spell and I think there's other things you can hit in this game other than a healing spell. It's not really like an MMO where you actually need to heal something. If you need to heal your wolf, just resummon it. That's usually what I do. So Briar Ward, I only put one skill point into this as well as the passives that come with it. And uh, Briar Ward, I use almost every time I fight a pack of enemies that I know are going to be difficult or somewhat difficult. If they're going to basically deal damage to me and uh, and have a chance of killing me, I'll drop Briar Ward before the fight starts and I'll stand in my Briar Ward. Uh, refresh, this ability is one of the optional abilities you can get with this uh, build. Um, it all depends on how much you want to spam Refresh or how much you want to spam Briar Ward and how much you want to spam Guardian Stones in Rune Mastery. I personally don't use Refresh that much because I don't uh, use Briar Ward and Guardian Stones every single fight. However, you could use Briar Ward and Guardian Stones every single fight if you wanted to with Refresh. That's why it's one of the optional skills. It's up to you if you want to go down that road and you want to make this a build that's like more focused on, uh, you know, those long cooldown abilities, using them every single uh, fight. That would make you quite overpowered, uh, even more overpowered than you already are with this build. So as far as wolves go, wolves are one of your bread and butter pets um, in this build, and I recommend you max out wolves, max out survival instinct, and max out strength of the pact. The maul ability is a lot less important. It's a very minor DPS increase. The other passives are a lot more important for your wolves. So the nymph, uh, the nymph tree, what I always do with this is I dump one skill point into each, uh, the nymph and the passives, and then I leave it alone until I get extra skill points. This skill, this build is going to be a very, very skill point heavy build. So it's unlikely you're going to get a lot of extra skill points to just throw into the nymph. But if you just get uh, one point into the nymph and the passives, and then you get a lot of plus skills, that'll carry you almost the rest of the way. As you can see, I got plus five all, uh, to all of my skills. So with one point, I already get six. So like half of... Uh, Basically, I'm halfway done a lot of these passives. But that's all there is to the nature th tree. I skip plague completely because uh, I already have too many abilities to hit and I don't need to add another one. So as far as the rune mastery tree, rune weapon, this is going to be your left mouse click and it will be your bread and butter damage for this build. It's, in, it's an insane uh, weapon buff. Uh, Magical Charge is, I think, uh, based on everything I've researched online, the best passive that comes with Rune Weapon. However, I like Energy Drain and I like Transmutation that also come with it. I max all of them out. Uh, so, Sacred Rage. This activates when you drop below, what is it, 40? It's 40%, right? Yeah. 
When your health drops below 40%, it activates. I put one point into this and one point into the passive. Uh, this build, since you are a caster and you will be using caster gear, you are a bit squishy, so you will sometimes spike below 40%. Uh, and that's why Sacred Rage is good. It'll be proccing someone often because you'll drop below um, 40% depending on where you are. Like if you're in Alanis or Act 4 or Act 5, it's more likely you're going to take spike damage and drop below 40%. If you're in like Act 1, 2, 3, a lot less likely unless you're towards like the end of Act 3, then it's, you know, a bit more common. So it, it's a good ability, but I don't think it's worth more than one skill point into each that and the passive. Just my personal opinion. Reckless Offense, this is going to be another one of the optional builds, uh, sorry, optional abilities you can use. Uh, this basically allows you to dual wield. And if you want to dual wield with this character, dual wield throwing weapons, you can. And I do, because I like the, uh, I've never played dual wield throwing weapons before. I wanted to try it, wanted to experiment with it. I don't think the damage increase that I get from dual wielding throwing weapons is worth worth the survivability trade-off. However, I would personally need to experiment before I'm able to say, you know, one or the other. I, I don't know. I, it requires more experimentation. So I'm leaving that open-ended for you guys. If you want to dual wield with reckless offense, have at it. If you want to use a uh, throwing weapon and a shield for the extra protection, that's, you know, on you guys too. So uh, energy armor. This is a uh, this is a weird ability. So uh, this ability I've read a lot of good things about online. However, my personal opinion of it is low. And uh, based on some of the other things that I've heard from popular Titan questers, there's one guy that I like on um, YouTube that uh, his YouTube channel is Clex Plays, and he has very 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 good breakdowns of Titan Quest. And uh, I kind of agree what he said about this ability ability is it it takes way too much energy to maintain it. Uh, this ability right here with 10, uh, 10 skill points into it, technically three skill points. And I think the plus skills carries me the rest of the way. It takes uh, 1500 energy to cast it. And you can see the next rank takes 2300 energy to cast it, which is more energy than I have. So if I get a shrine of mastery, I'm literally no longer able to cast this ability because it, it takes too much energy. So that's the reason I chose 10 out of 8. Uh, and that's the reason I don't have it maxed out is how I should explain it. And uh, so here's the thing about the ability. It's good. It protects you against a lot of damage uh, or a lot of the main incoming damage that you'll face, like physical and pierce. And it also gives 50% stun resist, which is great if you don't have max stun resist. However, it only absorbs 3,000 damage, so basically the first fight you go into after you cast it, it's going to get eaten off of you, and it takes basically a full mana pool in order to recast it. That's the trade-off, and I, I use it for bosses, I use it for hard enemies, I don't, I don't recast it during battle, I always use it before going into battle, and then I, you know, that's, that's what I do. I never recast it during battle, and seldom use it. So, Rune Word Absorb. This works with a shield or a staff, and if you're not going to get Reckless Offense, I would recommend you get Rune Word Absorb. Absorb. That's really all I have to say about that. It's a passive. It's a nice passive that boosts your survivability a bit. Rune Word Explode. This works with throwing weapons, and uh, I think it also, I'm pretty sure it works with melee. Let me see. Makes your strikes, yeah. See, it says uh, strikes and projectiles right there. Uh, so it works with both. It basically just adds a bit more damage. So it's a nice passive for uh, buffing your DPS. As you can see, I don't have them maxed out, as I said before, because skill points are like a, a rare commodity with this build. So Rune Word Feather. This is good. Reduces the strength requirement for all of your weapons. Means you won't have to spend a lot of attribute points into strength. And it also gives you some offensive ability, which increases your chance to hit enemies, chance to crit enemies, and uh, all of that good stuff. So uh, I totally recommend it. Totally recommend you maxing it out as well. Uh, so Thunderstrike. This is your right click attack. And boy, oh boy, is it powerful. Thunderstrike is amazing. And it has a very cool sound when you use it too. So that's, uh, it sounds like a lightning strike. So that's a, another bonus for using Thunderstrike. But this ability does a ton of damage. Honestly, sorry, hiccups, hold on. Honestly, it's almost better to use Thunderstrike on a single target than it is Rune Weapon. That's how much damage it does. And listen to the sound effect. Oh man, it, it only does it when it hits a target. I'll show you, don't worry, it's cool. 
out. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, I recommend you max Thunderstrike and I recommend you max Unleash the passive that comes with it. Both are phenomenal. I cannot recommend them enough. Seal of Fate. Uh, I have heard nothing but good things about this ability and I personally have had nothing but bad experiences with this ability. Uh, I still want to make an ability that is centered around Seal of Fate so I can actually like use it and learn to like it as much as other people do. However, based on what I have experienced with this ability so far, I don't like it. And I don't like it for this build. So, uh, it's, it's up to you if you want to, you can trade Seal of Fate and Runic Mines if you want. So, if you want to get rid of Runic Mines completely and roll with Seal of Fate, you can. That is, uh, an option that is available to you, but I prefer Runic Mines. So, Runic Mines is the next ability that we're going to talk about, and this ability is another one that I would describe as phenomenal. It uh, basically, let me show you here, it creates these mines all over around you and anytime an enemy runs into one of these mines, they explode. And because I have the freezing mines passive, the enemies also have a chance of freezing in place, which uh, it's like a stun. And they also have a chance of being slowed, which is a slow, makes them move slower, attack slower, yada yada. So it's really, really good uh, with the freezing mines passive and also the rune field passive is great too because it increases uh, how many projectiles and uh, how long the projectiles last. Uh, and honestly, rune of uh, runic mines, I use it in two main uh, scenarios. So first, I open every single fight with runic mines. Before I pull the, en I actually pull enemies with runic mines because they like you drop mines like way 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 far away from you so you can pull enemies from a really far distance with runic mines so i drop runic mines drop briar ward and then i start you know throwing either rune weapon or thunder strike at enemies either or so it is like one of the bread and butter abilities of this build that i use so the next ability i would talk about is men here wall i personally don't like men here wall too much i think it's uh, a bit <clears throat> uh crappy However, I somewhat like the Guardian Stones ability that uh, is in the ne is like the the next ability up the chain that you uh, can buy after you get Men Here Wall, and it's up to you if you would like to use both of these abilities. They do not share cooldowns, so you can uh, let me see here. Hold on, you can drop Men Here. Oop, that's Guardian Stones. You can drop Men Here Wall. Oop, sorry, Men Here Wall like this, and then Guardian Stones as well because they don't have the same cooldown. You can only have one men here wall at the top uh, down at the time though but men here wall acts as a uh, like a, a little way to protect yourself basically you can drop that stop enemies from closing the gap on you and uh there's the cool thunder strike sound too you can use it to stop enemies from closing the gap on you to box yourself in yada yada whatever you would like to do uh and like i said earlier in the video if you want to combine the uh refresh nature ability you can uh and with guardian stones and briar ward you can use refresh uh in between fights that way you can drop guardian stones and briar ward every single fight if you want to it's up to you if you want to go that route i personally think it's a bit overkill but again your choice so we have two more abilities in rune then we can move on to um skills or sorry gear and uh other stuff my stats Rune Storm. This is an optional ability. Basically creates a little circle of runes around you that deal damage to all enemies that are, uh, you know, within that radius. It's a decent ability. If I, uh, I kind of like it, and I think uh, uh, it's better if you have the refresh nature ability because you can keep Rune Storm up literally all the time. And if you have a little bit of uh, recharge gear too, it also drastically reduces the cooldown of Rune Storm. Honestly, I would not recommend this ability unless you have gear with recharge on it and or are using the nature ability refresh. I would skip it completely then if I don't have recharge or uh, the nature ability refresh. And last but not least, we have Rune of Life, which is another short duration buff uh, that you can put on yourself and it is in Rune Mastery. So this buff increases your strength, movement speed, bleeding resistance, and uh, vitality damage resistance. And it increases them all by percentages. It is a very, very good buff. Not only can you use it on yourself, but you can use it on your pets, as you're seeing here. And uh, if you're having a hard time uh, targeting your pets, keep in mind you can mouse over their portraits, like this, and cast it on them via their portraits. You don't have to actually, you know, mouse over them and when they're all moving around real fast and stuff like that. So keep that in mind. <clears throat> there is that. And uh, if you're someone like me, 
you might often forget to use short duration buffs and it's a bit unfortunate but it is a good one if you do remember to use it now let's move into gear and skills and i would like to move through this at a little we're already at like 15 minutes in the video so i would like to go a little faster than i have been of course most important max out your defenses after you max out your defenses i would say the next most important things are vitality and poison resist after you uh, max out your elemental resists vitality poison sorry pierce resist would be more important than vitality and uh poison pierce vitality poison and then you can move on to other things like defensive ability and uh and things like that to buff your survivability so as far as uh and i'll go into strength intelligence and dexterity and your stat spread after i explain the gear so as far as gear, I, I have Golden Chris in my main hand and I have uh, Freyella in my offhand. The main reason I chose both of these abilities or uh, weapons, Golden Chris, I chose because it has plus 44% elemental damages and it also comes with a uh, nice amount of defensive ability uh, just for extra survivability. It also comes with some minus recharge, which like I said before, I like for this build because it allows me uh, to use my abilities a lot more often like thunder strike i got down to like a, a 1.4 second cooldown which is pretty darn short band of souls i have for my vitality damage resistance uh, i also like the um the leech that comes on this ring both energy leech and life leech i think they're both very very good and they help improve my survivability so long as i am in combat and attacking when uh you know otherwise it, it counts for nothing Hesion's Golden Veil. I chose this helm because it has plus 51% elemental damages on it. It also has a lot of other very good caster stats like energy, energy regeneration, health, uh, recharge reduction, and of course it comes with elemental resistances as well. Star of Elysium. I chose this ring specifically because it comes with pierce and poison resistance and I wanted pierce and poison resistance. Uh, as you can see, I'm, I'm lacking on both of them. They're only at 33%. Otherwise, I would have chosen a different ring if I had better resistances, but I don't. Uh, this ring also comes with, you know, a little bit of health and a little bit of health regen. It puts, like, negligible. Freyella, this is a throwing weapon you get from uh, Titan Quest Atlantis. And the reason that I specifically chose this, because it has a 33% chance of giving you almost 400% bonus elemental damage. It's insane. Absolutely insane. And uh, that's 33%. So that's one in three hits. You have a chance of getting like 400% bonus elemental damages. I mean, can you get a better weapon for this build? I don't think you can. <laughs> uh, so Vestment of the Overlord. This I specifically chose for the Pierce Resistance because I needed it as well as the plus skills. Really nothing else. Uh, although, although the other um, stats that come on it are useful, health, energy, energy regeneration, defensive ability, yada yada, all of those are great and all, but this build needs plus to all skills and I needed pierced resistance, so that was my logic behind choosing it. Stonebinders Cuffs, specifically chose these because I need plus three to all skills. Uh, that's it. Also, I think attack speed counts towards uh, um, Thunderstrike. And uh, I'm pretty sure it does count towards rune weapon, so that's a nice little extra too. Also, I was able to socket this with a, uh, a charm, which has poison resist and bleeding resist on it because I need both of those resistances as well. My necklace, Necklace of Harmonia, I use this on a lot of my characters. The main thing I like about this is it comes with pierce resist uh, and poison resist. Again, always need those two resistances. Uh, it also comes with life leech, attack damage converted to health, plus some flat health and energy uh, buffs on it, which are nice. These uh, boots that I have. I got these for the poison res, the vitality res, as well as the uh, minus energy cost and the plus one to all skills in Rune Mastery. I like the plus one to all skills in Rune Mastery. It's uh, like, a, the, like I said, this, this build is built around plus skills. You have so many skills you need and they all have massive seal point investments. You need as much plus skills as you can possibly get. And that's why I got that. So Talisman of the Jade Emperor. This I basically got just to make up my uh, lack of resistances. This comes with a decent amount of um, elemental resistance on it. And I also have an elemental resist completion bonus. Which is uh, why I chose this artifact. I can also uh, switch this artifact out if I want for... Uh, whatchamacallit. 
the Apples of Idun artifact if I'm, say, uh, about to fight Hades, uh, the end boss of Act 4, or I'm about to fight any boss in the game that I know uses a crap ton of Vitality damage, I will swap this artifact out for Apples of Idun, and that will give me max Vitality res instead. So we're going to kill some mobs in a second, and I'm going to show you how this build works. Give me a second to take a drink, because my uh, throat is getting a little dry. Okay, so now we're going to go in and uh, slaughter some enemies. So we're going to go down a little bit here to the south in uh, this Atlantis zone. So as you can see, I drop uh, Runic Mines and I drop my Briar Ward right on top. And then I just start uh, throwing either Thunder Strikes or Rune Weapons at enemies. Sometimes when I want to aggro a lot of enemies, I'll do this. I'll run to different uh, areas like that and drop a few sets of Runic Mines that will aggro all enemies in the surrounding area, get them all in one uh, clustered location, which is exactly what I want because it rounds them all up, makes it nice easy for uh, taking them out. Love that Thunder Strike sound. Pow! So we're going to run around with Runestorm a bit. I'll show you how this works. Not like there's much to show. And i got to refresh my buff heal in a second. So I'm going to show you the power of Runic Mines. This is sometimes what I do when I fight hard enemies. I will run around like this with Runic Mines. Now you can see i got a bunch of them on the ground right now. So I will fight enemies like that and then keep turning around when they run through mines they'll get slowed by the mines they'll get frozen by the mines and then i just thunder strike them and take advantage of it blue tons wraps i got those already oh yeah let me throw uh buffs on my pets see anything that's going on there. So as you can see, I'm basically a beast as far as this goes. So let me see I can... We'll go to the north. So as you can see, if I, uh, if I stand there for too long, I do start taking a lot of damage, but if I'm constantly attacking, I'm almost always full health. You will be using a lot of uh, potions as far as this build goes, so keep that in mind. Probably not too many energy potions, but you'll be using a decent amount of health potions. And oh yes, I totally forgot. As far as stat distribution goes, only get enough strength to equip t uh, throwing weapons and or a shield that you need. Only get enough uh, dexterity to equip Stonebinder's Cups and any throwing weapons that you need. Uh, the most you'll get, I think right here, like Golden Chris, that requires almost 500 dexterity. So that's fine if you got to get like 500 dex. However, we got a lot of, uh, there's a lot of things you can get that reduce the requirements. Like my vestments here of the Overlord reduce requirements so I can use that without having 473 dex. But basically, get, as, get enough strength to where you can... Uh, Equip your shield and your weapons, get enough dexterity to where you can use Stonebinder's Cups, and then dump everything else into Intelligence. You can get a little bit of energy if you want, but I don't recommend putting too many points into it. Uh, just basically, you dump every extra bit you get into uh, Intelligence, and you buff your Intelligence as high as you possibly can, because that will buff your damage. And uh, you can put a little bit more into decks if you want for a little bit more defensive uh, ability, but it isn't really worth it, so keep that in mind. I would recommend uh, getting your defensive ability on your gear instead, if at all possible.
little uh, mute enemies hit very, very hard and they're kind of tearing my pets up. Oops. This is really all there is to uh, the build though. Fan Thunder Strike for your main damaging attack. Roof Mines at the start of every fight. Briar Ward also at the start of every fight. It's your nice extra little buff of survivability. Guardian Stones help too. Uh, they increase your damage by a marginal amount. Briar Ward also protects you a bit. It also offers some extra like niceties. Uh, reduces energy consumption. I think recharge rate if you stand in it, among other things. It's a pretty good ability. I don't use it. Uh, I don't use it on very many characters, but I think it's very fitting for this character. It works very. It synergizes very, very well with uh, with Rune Master and what abilities we're using. I think I'll end the video shortly after this because I'm pretty sure you guys have gotten the gist of how it all works. There's not much else I can think of explaining. I'm pretty sure I've explained almost everything there is for this build. If you guys have additional questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, feel free to post them below. I'll always answer them if, uh, if I can. Also, I have a written version of this guide on my website, almarsguides.com. If you would like to see the written version of this guide, you can always check out that version and use that in conjunction with this one. Or, you know, whatever version you want, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, uh, if this video helped you out, please leave me a like because that helps me out. And aside from that, I guess I will catch you guys around in future Titan Quest videos that I make. Peace.